Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Trending Reviews. So today with everyone doing exercise outside of their homes and a lot of people going running, there's something that's quite missing. A lot of people don't have smartwatches to track their activity and their running and all of their exercises. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing this brand new smartwatch that I received from a company called Run Doing. It is the NY16 version of the smartwatch range that they do. So I'm gonna give you a unboxing and showcase the specs and the capabilities of this nice little smartwatch. It does resemble a little bit like the Apple Watch but it's so much cheaper and the battery life is amazing. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. So as you can see, there is the watch itself. And this is the nice soft silicone strap. Let me go ahead and pull this one out. Inside the rest of the box, just quickly show you, you have the user guide and you have the uh, USB charger there with a nice little case that it sits on. And then you also have a screen protector as well. So you can put this on both the back and the front of the screen of the watch. So that's everything that comes in it. Let's go ahead and set this up just to show you the capabilities. So first things first, let's go ahead and put on the strap. There we go, let's just peel this off and let's turn this on. There you go, it's powering on. You get a nice vibration. And then there you have the main watch face there. You have some uh, activity stats there for your footsteps and your calories burns. That chart in the middle is just part of the face. It's not actually any metrics. You can actually cycle through the different watch faces. So if you scroll down, you can see various different ones here as well. So depending on which one that you'd like to use, you have the analog and digital versions there. This one, I guess, is the main one which shows you most stats. So you can keep this one if you'd like. Now, if we swipe to the right, you can see this is the step count. It shows you how many calories and how many steps you've done today. If you cycle through, this is your sleep pattern. This is the power button to turn it off. And if you are gonna pair this with your phone with Bluetooth, then this is the settings that you'll see to pair it. Now, as you can see, the timeout of the screen is pretty quick. So what you can do is you can go into settings, and then you can change the screen lockup length. Right now it's set to five seconds. I will change it to about 15 seconds and then click back. Now this comes with 10 different modes. So you've got things like the walking, running, treadmill, bike, even the elliptical machines and rowing machine and, and many more. So you can find them under sport. You can see they've all listed here. So whichever one you want to do, it's pretty good that it will cover the majority of your cardio exercises. Now, if you go back, press the button again, it takes you back to the home screen. So you'll have to go back again. Now to go back, you keep scrolling up and it'll go to the previous page. It's got a pretty cool feature to find your phone as well, which is quite common these days. If you do lose your phone, then you can select that. And once you've paired it with your Bluetooth, then this will obviously help you locate that. Let's go back again. You also have your heart rate monitor. I haven't got it on my wrist yet, but you can actually calculate your heart rate. If you do blood pressure, you can also check your blood pressure there as well, which is pretty convenient to have. If you scroll up, you also have the most common types of apps as well. You have a stopwatch, a countdown, and you have information here, which is basically any alerts that you get from your phone once you've paired it for Bluetooth. And if you've set up the app as a female, then you can monitor your female cycles on a monthly basis through the app here as well. You also have a music app there. So if you set it up with your phone, then you can set it to use either any type of music app. Most likely it will be Spotify and it will work just fine there. If you go into settings, you can change things like the uh, information setting as well. So where you want to receive your notifications, like phone calls. This is quite tailored to the Chinese market. So you have things like WeChat and QQ, but you can also have the most common social media apps as well. I will turn on WhatsApp. Maybe I want to get notifications for Twitter as well. So maybe I can turn that on as well. And as you can see, there's Instagram there as well. So the primary ones that you probably use will be there. And to be honest, I'd like to use Gmail as well. So for me, that's pretty convenient. Swipe back, brightness control. It can go pretty bright and I'll show you how bright it is and if you can still see it in broad daylight when the sun is shining. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And then you also have the on off setting there as well. So if you wanna use this to turn on your clock reminders, or any other sedentary reminders as well, then you can do that. The other thing is, like most watches, you can turn your wrist for turning the screen on as well, which is pretty convenient to have. 
and then all of the other ones there just to be listed as different various settings. Now the watch face itself is pretty smooth. It feels a bit like an Apple Watch. It's a little bit lighter than the Apple Watch itself. And the one thing I really like about this is that it has a very large battery life. So it is seven days. And if you keep it on standby, it can go up to 30 days as well. It takes about two hours to charge fully, which I think is an awesome amount of time. So let me go ahead and put this on my wrist. Now the watch itself is IP68 waterproof as well, which means if you do go swimming with this, then it will work absolutely fine. So you can keep the watch on there in that scenario as well. So as you can see, I'll turn it off there. But when I turn my wrist to my face, it turns on and it, just like most of the main watches on the market today, it does a great job doing that. So those are the primary features and I think it's so comfortable. The silicone strap is very comfortable to wear. Right, so the last step is to connect this via Bluetooth so you can use all of the features. It's an app called HBand. So if you download that, it's compatible with both iOS and Android. So if you have an iPhone, it should be fine. So let's go ahead and set this up. You do have to create an account. So I've just signed up for one. It's now logging in. It asks you to select a skin color type of yourself. So I'm just gonna pick that one. Go through the various steps, adding your personal information. Right, so now I'm going to go through the steps to connect it. And as you can see there top, NY16 is the model number. So I will select that. Just need to wait for it to connect. Click yes. There we go, it's pretty much ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is basically go for a walk and grab some groceries, come back just to see how the app has populated. Now, if you do go for a run, this can also track the route that you've taken and see that visible on a map, much like most of the common running apps nowadays. So what I'm gonna do now is go for a walk to the local grocery store, grab some groceries, come back and show you how this has populated. All right guys, so just came back from the grocery store and as you can see here, I've now done 2,431 steps and my heart rate is at 85 BPM. So it does a pretty good job and I can see that outdoors when I was just checking this in the broad daylight, it's a little bit hard to sometimes see the screen, especially when it's very sunny because the brightness level is not as good as the high definition resolution screens you get on things like the Galaxy Watch or the Apple Watch. But for the price you pay on this, it does a fantastic job. Now, just to show you a little bit about the stats, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the app to see what types of things it has allowed me to monitor. Right, so as you can see there, 2,400 at the top. You can see the stats for today. Now, I haven't done any sleep or blood pressure checks at the moment. Now, there's an icon there on the top right-hand side next to the share button, if you click on that. This can show you a history of your total stats over a weekly period, a monthly or a yearly period as well, which I think is pretty good. So you can see your progress over time. And then if you click on the more item right there next to the battery life there in the middle, you can see a couple of options there. They have a settings option there that you can go in. From here, you'll have to set the permissions of your phone to allow message notifications to come to the smartwatch. So I've enabled this through my Android phone and now I can get text messages. So here, you can also turn on notifications for various different things. If you scroll down, there's plenty of settings and here is where you can take photos as well. So if you go to take a photo, I can actually put my phone to the side somewhere. Let me switch the camera around and then I'll take photo. There you go, pretty instant, does a great job. Now if I go back, so plenty of options to play around with. Now, just to show you how it's like to get a text message alert on your watch, I will send a quick text message to my sister and see how it appears on the watch. All right, so I've just sent her a message to say, hi, how are you? There you go, you can see, I'm oh, great, thanks, how are you? So that pops up and you see the notification straight away. There's no way to really hide the preview before it pops up, but that's not a big issue for me. If you do miss it, you can go back into the information app there and you can see all of your recent notifications that you've received. So I've received one from Gmail and that text message one and you only have the option to clear it. So if I select that I can read all of the full message. So that's pretty much a basic functionality but it does the job. It's kind of like a Fitbit as well. It gives you the basic functionality you need for a smartwatch and it gives you a wide variety of apps to be notified by and almost all of the most common social media apps as well. So for me that does a great job. Now the final step is to show you how I would receive phone calls and what would appear on the screen. So I've just asked my sister to give me a call. 
there you go you can see there's an incoming call now you don't have an option to answer it here because this doesn't have an inbuilt microphone but you can mute it the watch is vibrating or you can hang up there so i can just hang up the call by pressing that and it will tell you you've hung up so all the common functionality you need from a smartwatch and i think it's just done a great job and i will be wearing this going forward especially going for my run and tracking my fitness activities all right guys so hopefully that review is quite useful for you i think it's done a great job so far it's hit my expectations from a watch of this price range it does come roughly around 50 dollars depending on which country you're purchasing it from so i will leave all of the links in the description below of where you can buy this on amazon from both the us and the uk markets and any other links that are relevant for purchasing this awesome little watch so seven days battery life probably one of the best and longest battery lives you have. It's a very good competitor to something like a Fitbit, not so much like an Apple Watch or a Galaxy Watch, but nonetheless, it's pretty convenient. It's a great gift to give to people as well. So I'm pretty happy. And if there's anything else you wanna know, then drop a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you like this video and I hope you subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.